Hello, my name is Tom Gehring, and I would like to introduce you to my 112 scale radio controlled replica of the PH model 1015 Corolla Crane. Let's start out with a brief tour of the model and some of its unique attributes. Looking at the operator station of this 1960s vintage crane, I was able to utilize a 112 scale Star Wars figure along with downloaded photos to replicate the operator, his seat, the various control levers, and foot brake pedals. Also note the operator is wearing PPE and that the sliding door latches magnetically shut. I will now reopen the operator's door to try and show you some of the switches that I have installed at the back of the operator station to control various functions of the model. This photo identifies the switches that control the power to each of three sets of LED lights, the cab electronics cooling fan, and the battery voltage telemetry receiver. The model also has a high boom power cutoff system that depowers the model whenever the boom is raised too high. The red momentary contact switch shown here is used to override the power cutoff, enabling the boom to be lowered back down from a dangerously high position. As previously referenced, in order to prevent damage from accidentally raising the boom too high, a boom backstop shaft mounted cam activates a micro switch that in turn powers a relay that depowers the entire model. Let me step back now and demonstrate how the boom high system works. Now I'll press the override switch, which will enable me to lower the boom. Located in the same location of full-size crane's rear right side window, a Droke battery monitor was installed to monitor the voltage, amps, power, and energy status of the model's 12-volt, 24-amp-hour lithium-ion phosphate battery. The Canoids details, including the P&H logo and its unique ampersand, were scaled up from this photograph downloaded from the internet of a 1015 and cut out of 1 16th plywood sheet. Note the model's accurately detailed counterweight corner ribs with yellow pinstripes, the two lifting eyes, and the counterweight lowering shivs that have been incorporated in the model's counterweight. Note the two rear-facing LED spotlights that reflect the fact that the power is turned on to the model, along with the satellite receiver that's mounted at the back of the cab. On the top left hand side is a diesel exhaust stack complete with rain cap. Below the, ex the exhaust stack is the louvered air intake for the diesel engine that was fabricated from plastic structs, HO scale staircase material and bass wood strips. Behind the air intake is mounted the two inch speaker for the sound system. I selected a second Star Wars figure of the same scale to poise as the oiler opening the equipment side door. Note the oiler is complete with PPE and a toolbox. The left side shows a replication of the steps leading to the roof and the gantry of the model. Now let's zoom in and take a closer look at the model's replication of the boom base deck, deck equipment. On the left hand and right hand side are the mounting brackets for the boom. Moving inward from that are replications of the two hook bearings that are actually aren't bearings but are replications of what the hook bearings actually look like. Then in the center are the mounting brackets for the fair lead which are used whenever the crane is set up as a drag line. I've also included in the model an on-off switch 
for the cooling fan on the lower coiler assembly that I use whenever I'm propelling the model around on the treads. But when I'm not doing so, I like to shut it off to save power. Lastly, take a look at where the lower coiler assembly primary receiver is located. The model's gantry structure is an accurate replication of the full-size crane's gantry, including the gantry top access ladder. The model's upper and lower gantry spreaders are accurate scaled replications of the full-size crane's boom cable support system. All of the 10 shivs on the system are mounted on ball bearings and all are provided with a means of cable retention. The upper gantry spreader attaches to the boom tip by two 1 16th diameter steel cables, each with custom clevises that were machined from quarter inch square aluminum rod and that are attached at each end of the boom support cables. The model's boom replicates the full-size crane's tubular style boom and is a hybrid construction that utilizes a combination of oak dowel rods, brass tubing, and brass sheet at points of high stress concentration. Each of the smaller oak perpendicular lattice components or counterboard 3 32nd of an inch deep and glued into each of the four larger diameter oak corner rods to provide both accurate alignment and shearing resistance to any movement when stressed. The boom tip subassembly starts here with four corner brass tubes that are soldered using 50-50 solder into the boom tip subassembly. Again, all of the four tip shivs, the four shivs in the block and the auxiliary shivs have ball bearing centers and have provide for cable retention. Industrial Rexnord Acetal tabletop conveyor chain was used as treads with custom three inch pitch diameter sprockets that rotate at 6.7 RPM, providing a scale ground speed of 60 inches per minute for the model. Electrical power is transmitted from the cab mounted battery not shown to the lower crawler assembly via a custom slip ring assembly that is mounted on the cab center of endless rotation between the cab's left and right 3 8 inch thick aluminum side plates. The model's custom slip ring assembly uses redundant dual carbon brush sets that are mounted to the cab's rotating quarter inch aluminum base plate and two copper slip rings that are mounted to this stationary crawler base. While I plan to make additional boom sections for the model, so far I've made three 36 inch boom sections as shown in the pictured nine foot boom. However, the following demo video was made with the six foot boom configuration.